Oh, I like your shirts. <laughs> you should see the other colors. I have a blue one. You have a blue one? Yeah. Oh, you're the one. <laughs> All right. I am told by Tom that there's oh, a couple of that stragglers downstairs, but he suggests that we go ahead and start. Oh, no so. whip in a chair. Say what? A whip in a chair. Exactly, and I'm going down the stairs. So okay. um, welcome, everybody, to Tom's mm -hmm. in my house. I don't always say that. You should say my house, right? Mm -hmm. They hit me. <laughs> a couple of times ago, I thought. Mm -hmm. uh, it's wonderful to see you all. It's wonderful to see people we haven't seen before. Stacy and Peggy. Peggy and Judy. And we've seen Bonnie and we've seen everybody else. And we haven't seen Michael. And this is uh, Mark. And Marie, and anybody behind me that's new, no, just him. Oh, and Alan, <laughs> goodness, I forgot Alan. Alan's a very good guitar player and good singer. I took a class with him on folk music, and it was first class. So, so I want to welcome you all to our home. It's lovely to see you all. And Tom, uh, Dave will play for about an hour, and then we'll have a little break for dessert and coffee and stuff. And we usually wind it up, you know, well, when he's tired of playing, basically. <laughs> <laughs> when we let him go. This is the money one. Do do if you don't have good eyes, it says, I don't need Google, my father knows everything. <laughs> Mary bought that. <laughs> I thought it was because he does know everything. And I have to interject a small story. Our son went off to England for a graduation present. He wasn't college, it's not his thing. And he used to call Tom on his cell phone from pubs in England, where he was in a quiz team. And so he said, what's this and what's that? And I said, I don't think you're supposed to do that. I really don't, but anyway. Um, so this is for the money, and this is Dave's living, and everybody, if you could pop $15 in, that would be terrific. There are CDs, there's no pressure to buy, but I'm sure Dave will be happy to tell you about them at the break. There will be plenty of pressure then. Oh, <laughs> um, so welcome everyone. I'm so happy to see such a nice group. So thank you so much. And Dave, take it away. Oh, no, no Kendall, no. we have a treat. We have a treat. Mr. Morse, and I imagine many of you know Kendall, he's a folklorist and singer from way back when, is going to tell us a story. It'll be brief, and he wants our opinion on whether it's appropriate to put in his next book. So, <laughs> take it away, Kendall. Is this great? Mm -hmm. If that in it, so I would say yes. It's gotta be you. Yeah. I was thinking I was a used up old man. No. Apparently not. Kendall, come over here and face the camera. <laughs> oh, you got it. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna record this. Wow. Oh, there is a camera. Can you see? I'm in the process of writing the third book, and I, I'm not sure that I should put this story in the new book. You know, when you get to be my age, somebody asked me, said, now that you're in your 80s, what of your senses do you miss the most? my sense of decency. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm never miss going that. to throw this at you. Now, if you're offended, please tell me. And I won't use it if you do like it by the book. <laughs> now, I have to do this first person because I'm not old enough otherwise. You have to pretend I'm an old man. <laughs> I'll do the jokes. <laughs> Nineteen twenty seven. My wife and I used to want to go to the pictures in the town. So I'd fire up the old Model T and we'd drive to the to the town. The old thing that always overheat. There was a hill that we had to climb. And uh, I took a bucket and I used to stop halfway up that hill. There was a spring of water and I knew she'd be overheated. So I, here we go. Now I forgot. I had traded cars and uh, the Model T. We're 
was over here. But I traded him for more lay. And that had a water pump. No need. She didn't know me. But like for some habit, I'd stop at that spring and I'd get a bucket of water and I'd pour it into the radiator. Well, this time I did that. It would only take a cupful, and the rest of it, I didn't know what to do with it. So I finally, like anybody would, I took this half a bucket of water, and I sluiced it off into the woods. Well, this guy stood up, and he gave me hell. Oh, he lit it. And he called me everything he could think of, and I, I didn't know. So finally, when he calmed down, I says to him, God, man, can't you see I got a woman in this car? He says, what the hell do you think I got in these bushes? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
get the air and then take up the strain and watch the Mary Ellen Carter rise again. Come on! Rise again! Rise again! Her name not be lost to the knowledge of men. Those who loved her best and were with her till the end will make the Mary Ellen Carter rise again. But he also <laughs> he also looks and plays like Dave. Sure. <laughs> and I wasn't meaning not to say that, Mary. Thank okay. you for correcting me. Oh, that one's warm. Oh, you yeah. want a cold one? I'll go. Sure. It's just going to get warmer. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I just need a coaster. A bumper sticker makes a lovely coaster, by the way. <laughs> And if you have a car that has a rusty bumper, you can't get an inspection sticker. Ah. <laughs> Take one of these, put it over the rust hole, <laughs> and you'll get an inspection sticker. Are you sure? <laughs> That's what we did. You'll have to ask your husband. <laughs> okay. Deborah, thank you and Tom for. Uh, where'd Tom go? He's uh, cleaning he's, out downstairs. Yeah, He's an amazing man, let me tell you. <laughs> you lucked out on that one. I did indeed. But the odd thing is, he thinks he lucked out too, so there you go. <laughs> All right. I'm not even going to go down that path. Anyhow, thank you for having me in your home. I'd like to do a song that I wrote called Home. It's, um,. A song that I wrote with the intention of turning it into a sing-along. I was a much younger man then, and I really didn't realize that in order for a song to be a good sing-along, it had to have no fewer than six words in the chorus. <laughs> um, so I'm going to show you how the chorus goes so that perhaps you'll sing along. Home is where the hugs are warm and where the words are kind. Home is clocks that strike the hour but never pass the time. There are many things a home could be, but still these words ring true. You know it's not a home without you. That's the chorus that goes, home is where the hugs are warm, 
and where the words are kind. I'm doing this twice, just in case you missed it the first time. <laughs> home is clocks that strike the hour, but never pass the time. There are many things a home could be, but still these words ring true. You know it's not a home without you. <laughs> the written exam will be later. <laughs> it's only a building, it's only a place. A shelter to hide from the battle or the race. It's a place I might go if I don't know what to do. But you know it's not a home without you. It's warmth from the fire to shake off the winter chill. A window many hours spent with elbows on the sill. It's a tapping on the rooftop that the rain just can't fall through. But you know it's not a home without you. Here we go. Home is where the hugs are warm and where the words are kind. Home is clocks that strike the hour but never pass the time. There are many things a home could be, but still these words ring true. You know it's not a home. So I'm sitting in my room writing words on a page. I think about this life we share and how our ways have changed. And I wonder if the same holds true for you as sure for me. Would this home be home for you without me? Here we go! Home is where the hugs are warm and where the words are kind. Home is clocks that strike the hour but never pass the time. You gotta sing again. Home is where the hugs are warm and where the words are kind. Home is clocks that strike the hour but they never pass the time. There are many things a home can be, but still these words ring true. You know it's not a home without you. There are many things a home could be, but still these words ring true. song all picked out and now I've forgotten what it was. I have to choose a different one. Oh no, I remember what it was. I knew where I wanted to put this thing. Since I'm doing songs that I wrote, this is another one that I wrote and it's a, it's a historical piece about Boone Island. Did you ever visit Boone Island? Never you, you were always up the coast. So. Yeah. You know where it is though, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. You don't want to go there. No. There's no reason to. It's, uh... Bad karma. Well, there's that, too. <coughs> we can get into that. Um, it's, it's an island about the size of this room that is down about seven miles out to sea off York Beach. Just look out there, and on a clear day, you might see a lighthouse sticking up. And that's Boone Island Light. It's a desolate place. And it's in the open ocean, so the, the weather comes up fierce there. And um, as a matter of fact, there were so many um, shipwrecks uh, and uh, episodes of cannibalism, which Kendall was just referencing, um, that the Army Corps of Engineers uh, was asked to put a lighthouse on that island. And it took them three tries to get a, a lighthouse to actually stay on this rock. 
They built the first one out of straw. <laughs> <laughs> and the sea huffed in it. The sea huffed in it. Huffed in it. Huffed in it. Huffed in it. Then they built one out of sticks. <laughs> Should I keep going with it? Yes, yeah. <laughs> we've read it. It's okay. Oh, good. <laughs> so, uh, the wreck of the Nottingham Galley happened there, which that was the episode of cannibalism. I'm not going to go into it right now. That's good. It's it's been it was could it was well covered. Uh, you know, in, in, in a wonderful novel. Who wrote that? It was, um, it's escaping me. If you search for it on Google, you'll come up with it. <laughs> Call could, Tom, maybe he knows. Yeah. Tom knows. <laughs> Look at the cup, he knows everything. It's, it's probably one of these books here. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Let me search. Boone Island. Boone Island. If you search Boone Island and cannibalism, you'll come up with the name of the book and who wrote it. Not a lot of other places with the two things together. Right? Yeah, you put, yeah. But anyways, this uh, this song has nothing to do with that, so I'm not going to belabor the point. Um, this song has to do with something that happened after they got a lighthouse to stay on the island. And it is true, they put three lighthouses on this island, and finally there is one that stayed there. Um, and it was just purchased a few years ago by somebody who wanted to own a lighthouse. I don't, I don't understand that. The song's called The Keeper of the Light. Yes. It's a ghost story. Off the coast of Maine, your story's often told. How you drift across the boulders when the winds blow wild and cold. Sailors hear your mournful wails when squalls come up at night, and they know they're in the presence of the keeper of the light. Why do you walk these broken rocks forever, Catherine Bright? So many men we've seen you when the waters rage at night. A sad eyed apparition. Heard about your husband, he was the keeper of the light. How he drowned in raging waters on that fateful winter night. You kept the lighthouse burning strong to keep the sailors warned and saved the lives of countless men the five days of the storm. Why do you walk these broken rocks forever, Catherine Bright? So many men we've seen you when the waters rage at night. A sad apparition. lighthouse once they made it across the reef. You drifted into madness from exhaustion and grief. For five days without food or sleep you kept the ships from harm. Then you sat down with his frozen lifeless body in your arms. Why do you walk these broken rocks forever can't and bright? So many men we've seen you when the waters rage at night. I sat
you sing a song with me? So well. All right, you could have sung that last one too. I'm not holding anybody back and saying don't sing. Now, all of this stuff is fair game for singing along. Once you get it, you know, go ahead and pitch in. If you don't get it, hum along. I don't care. Make up the words. I really. That sounds so Pete Seeger-ish. What was that? Making up the words. Pete Seeger used to say the same thing. Well, he was right. You're right. You're right. It's dead. Kumbaya. <laughs> you deserve that. I guess I do. <laughs> Not long. <laughs> this is my dad's guitar. He bought it from Denny Bro. We were both in a band with at the same time. And then I inherited it. So all the members of a single band owned this guitar <laughs> at one time or another. My dad bought this uh, just a few months before he died. And he bought it because he had never, ever owned a solid wood guitar made by hand. He owned it for just a short time. And I, uh, I kept the same strings on it for about three years after he died because I couldn't bear to change them. And they sounded terrible, I find. <laughs> <coughs> but uh, this next song he taught me. We recorded it together. It's on uh, the <laughs> CD. Right there. <laughs> yep. It's hard to believe this has been done for 23 years. <laughs> the song is a, a song written by uh, Charlie McKettigan. It's got a great chorus. I think the reason he taught it to me was of this chorus it's a uh, it's a parent's wish for their children this entire song is uh, as you send them out into the world my son's graduating from high school in June I suppose I should teach it to him Guitar strings into Petros, I'll tell you. <laughs> so here's the chorus. I hope you find the feet of a dancer. I hope you learn to sing in the rain. I hope you find all the easy answers to your pain. And I hope you find love and affection. And someone who'll care I hope you find all the right direction Everywhere Everywhere You have that yet? <laughs> I hope you find the feet of a dancer I hope you learn to sing in the rain I hope you find all the easy answers to your pain I hope you find love and affection And someone who'll care I hope you find all the right direction Everywhere Everywhere Find the feet of the dancer. I hope you learn to sing in the rain. I hope you find all the easy answers to your pain. And I hope you find love and affection and someone who'll care. I hope you 
find all the right direction everywhere, everywhere. It won't be easy, but what can I say? There will be trouble along the way. And round every corner, there'll be terror and tears. Just always remember that we're here. Come on. And I hope you find the need of a dancer. I hope you learn to sing in the rain. I hope you find all the easy answers to your pain. And I hope you find love. And someone who cares I hope you find all the right direction Everywhere, everywhere A shoulder to cry on When you are alone You know you can rely on those you know Oh, there's nothing too crazy and there's nothing to dear. Just always remember that we're here. Come on. And I hope you find the need of a dancer. I hope you learn to sing in the rain. I hope you find all the easy answers to your pain. And I hope you find love and affection. And someone who cares I hope you find all the right direction Everywhere, everywhere Even when the rain comes falling down You know it's falling down songs before I dump into something completely different. Do you need another one of those tapes? One of these? Yes, just oh, let me no, know. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, okay. It's all right. This just will get let me, me know, Guy. I am your servant. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted a woman to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we should just shout the tall. Yes. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> going to do now? One of, one of your father's songs. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm just waiting to see which one. Well, this is a song that he wrote about my my French-Canadian heritage because he had none of his own. Yes. <laughs> which of course is right across the river from Lewiston. And uh, Lewiston and Auburn both had and have uh, a thriving French-Canadian community. It's 
not like it once was when the mills were operating and there were, you know, jobs everywhere. They're trying to find their way now in this post-industrial world. But he was always taken by the work ethic of the French Canadians in the community. Um, well, there was that. There was also the uh, the unspeakable things that they would do with pork fat, which he was quite enamored of as well. Creton comes to mind. You, anybody here not know what Creton is? Creton. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's... Um, on top of the pork fat. <laughs> <laughs> Something's gross. <laughs> There's, There's no sage on the inside. There's no sage. Well, I mean, maybe some people put sage in it, but I don't put sage in it. I've never heard of that. But they use warm, warm spices like cloves, allspice, cinnamon. Uh, well, let me get back to the beginning of the recipe. Okay. First, you take a pig, <laughs> and then you grind it. Uh, and then you put it on the stove uh, with some water to cover, some garlic, some minced onions, salt and pepper, uh, cloves, allspice. Some people put cinnamon in it. Um, some people put nutmeg in it. Uh, this sounds so good. I, I, I can't help you with that. <laughs> that that's not authentic. And uh, you can do whatever you want with yours. But you let that slowly cook and render down uh, until it's just this pot of goop <laughs> sitting on top of the stove. Uh, and then you chill it. And you let the fat rise to the top. So it looks like this pot of goop with fat on top. Uh, and at this point, it will stand up to a knife, just like butter will, and you spread it on your toast in the morning, put a little mustard on it, and I want to tell you, <laughs> it's, uh, it's the stuff that... Uh, Clogs your arteries. <laughs> I did not say that it did not make a lot of cardiologists rich, but well, actually, the, the funny thing is, is that we're, we're talking about essentially lumberjack food. This is the stuff that kept working men working in cold winter months. And it kept them warm while they were working through an entire day. Uh, and you mix that stuff with some mashed potatoes and put it in a pie shell and you have tortillere. You have heart attack on the stick, I think. <laughs> well, if you believe the cardiologist. I guess. <laughs> Good point. Good point. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we've, been discover, we've been discovering that what's been killing us all these years has really not been pork fed, and it's been, you know, refined sugars and flowers. So let's... Lack of music. <laughs> and lack of music. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow. I'm going to play a song about the Quebecois people. I'm a son of Quebec, I'm a farmer and a Frenchman by birth. I am used to hard work and the sun on my neck, and I raised what I could from the earth. But now I'm a weaver in some rich man's mill, making blankets to earn a week's pay. And it's six days a week, dawn to dark in this hell. But I'm going back home come someday. I'm Giselle Corvo, and I'm joining my bow in the spring when the log drives through. He's a woodsman now, and I do love him so, and for him there's not much I won't do. So I sweat all day long in this shoe factory Just to put a few dollars away To save toward a farm in our own country Cause we're going back home come someday It is work, it is family, it's church, it is God It is why we came here to this land To make a new
Gerard Fournier And I cut wood all day in the spring I'll be taking a wife We'll go back to the land It's our forefathers' way To nurture the earth is our life And on Saturday nights we will dance and we'll sing Raise a glass to our family and friends And it's Sunday to church and the solace it brings And on Monday we'll start once again It is work, it is family, it's church, it is God It is why we came here to this land To make a new life and be what we are Quietly toil in this new land of hope we have found In the woods, on the sea, in the hard rocky soil In the factories that clutter the towns And we made up cathedrals to the glory of God They were built of our blood and our tears And we made it through hard times and hunger and floods and we'll be here for thousands of years. It is work, it is family, it's church, it is God. It is why we came here to this land. To make a new life and be what we are. The proud and the strong never The proud and the strong never It is why we came here to this land To make a new life and be what we are The proud and the strong Kevacuan The proud and the strong Kevacuan The proud and the strong Kevacuan The proud and the strong Thank you. I don't think it's the music that brought the cat out. I think you can hear the, the yarn unraveling over here. <laughs> <laughs> this poor cat is, he is so old, you know. How old is he? How old is he? How old is he? About 18. He just keeps on going. <laughs> Somebody buy him a beer or something. <laughs> <laughs> I thought some earned it. I a little cretin for him. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I've never seen a cat turn that down. <laughs> I've never seen a cat eat it either. <laughs> <laughs> there isn't there isn't a self respecting Frenchman who's gonna give any of his cretin to a cat. Yeah. <laughs> you know they they like I said you. First, you start off with a pig. You can't eat the whole pig. The snout and the tail go to the cat. Not this cat. It's a piggy. It's kind of like schmaltz. Oh, yeah. The, the yes. Jewish. Yes. It's, it's very much like schmaltz. Yeah. I mean, creton. C R E T O N S. You can actually buy it. Mayotte's Best from Lewiston makes it. You can buy it at Hannaford in, in the, uh, the sausage area of the market. Mayotte's best. They also make um, some decent breakfast sausage if you like a really fatty breakfast sausage. Uh, they make French Canadian salted herbs, which if you've never had French Canadian salted herbs, it's parsley and leeks and salt. <laughs> That's, That's it. it. Wow. That's it. And and they uh, they put it in a little mason jar and you put it into a, a soup or a stew or. Spread it on your toast. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that, but it, it's it's miraculous stuff because you can get the taste of fresh parsley and leeks any time of the year. It's not frozen. It's just put up in salt. It's amazing stuff, and it's just this this iridescent green color. 
you know, it, it just holds on to all of that. How did we get off onto food, anyway? <laughs> oh, um, I'll back down to food. Do, are there any requests before I do something I'll regret? <laughs> yes. Have you ever heard of a main author by the name of, uh, oh, the name of the book is Great Gale's Entire Disasters on the Main Coast? That sounds familiar. This goes way back. Can't remember his name, damn it. Great Gales, and he's a terrible author. <laughs> <laughs> what request do you have? So, what do you want from that? <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> I've already ruled it out, but I was curious. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you. Shall I take him home soon? <laughs> no, that's all right. He's still entertaining. <laughs> Dave, when you're about two songs late from the break, let me know. Is it that late already? Well, no, but I'm just... All right. Tom has to make coffee and tea. Oh. Well, he doesn't mind. He's just making it. <laughs> will, will you at some point do the, the song about the, the circus ship? Probably not. No. Okay. No, <laughs> I've learned a lot of my father's songs, but that's I, not one of them. I thought you did that the last time you were here. No, I think I refused then, too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> On a roll, huh? Isn't so it selective fun. memory wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> that one might happen. That one might happen. Might happen. All right. Well, I've wasted entirely enough time not singing a song, and I, I did that one. What was I about to do? I have it. Oh. I haven't done... When uh, I started in this business, start, started playing music for a living, uh, I was 15 years old. Uh, so, I mean, I'm 45 now, so... <laughs> I'm, I'm officially 30 years in this business, which most people can't say about any business at 45. Um, but I, I started off, I was playing in a, a group with three brothers. Well, actually, it was two brothers at the time. And one of their best friends. So there were four of us. Uh, and we were called Makeham's Row and Sullivan. The, the two brothers were uh, Shane and Rory Makeham, Tommy oh, Makeham's yes. sons. Mm -hmm. And Brian Sullivan, who was a screaming lead guitar player, and he just really wanted to take a screaming lead guitar break in the middle of this folk music <laughs> and it really wasn't to be and I played bass with him um, and it was a, a situation that my dad hooked me up with he said hey you're, you're playing now you need a gig uh, yeah, yeah I'd love a gig yeah well you need to play with some people who know what they're doing have a little experience so he me up with uh, a folk garage band. <laughs> Actually, it was a we, we practiced in Tommy Makeham's basement, which is the, I think really? that's the closest. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the, oh my goodness! That's that's where we practiced, uh, and it was an it was really an amazing experience. We played a handful of gigs. I flew to my first gig, which I thought was amazing. <laughs> um, air travel isn't as much fun anymore, is it? No fun at all. Anyhow, but I, I really didn't understand at the time. Tommy Makeham was my dad's friend, and he was this guy who was the father of the people I played with, but I really didn't understand that he was a world famous folk singer at the time. You know, I was a little wet behind the ears. Stand back. <laughs> oh, I wasn't so bad. Why? So, anyhow, uh, later on in my career, people started asking me 
to play this particular Tommy Makem song, mostly around St. Patrick's Day. That's when everybody starts feeling Irish and they want to get into the spirit. And uh, so I learned it, and years later, I understood it. And in 2004, shortly after my dad died, I released this CD right here, which is called Big Shoes. It's got a pair of clown shoes on the front. Because people were telling me, right after my dad died, that, boy, do I have big shoes in Bill. <laughs> And my dad would have thought that was hilarious. So I decided to put a pair of clown shoes on the CD. Uh, because I thought that was actually the most fitting way to deal with it. Um, but I recorded this song on that CD. And in May of that year, we did a memorial concert slash memorial for my dad at the First Parish Church in Portland. And Tommy Makem played at it. Oh, really? Yes, he did. Wow. And you weren't there. I know. I didn't know about it. You didn't tell me. <laughs> I can't do everything. <laughs> God damn it. Get, get with the program. Sorry. <laughs> so I took one of these CDs, and I handed it to Tommy, and I said, I recorded one of your songs. I think you should have this. And he took it. I mean, he was, he stood up taller than any man I've ever seen. He, he was just, <laughs> he turned it over in his hands. He looked at it to the end of his arm. He said, no, you didn't. You recorded three.
What have I now? Said the fine woman. What have I now? This proud old woman did say, I have fallen. Irish Fest in 2006. Was it 06? It was 06. I was there, and Tommy Macon was there, and Tommy knew he was dying, and he knew this was going to be his last appearance at this festival. And at the end of the festival, there's this, uh, this portion that they call the scattering, where Every performer who played on every stage, and this is an immense festival with many stages, every performer who played on every stage at the festival gets together and they perform together. Uh, and Tommy was the ringleader for this part of the performance. And I, was, I came up and I was playing bass behind the ensemble. And I was standing next to Rory Makem, who of course was in my first band with me. And is now Maycomb in Spain, the Spain Brothers. Right? Yes, he's with, his, with the Spain Brothers. Awesome. And uh, Tommy was introducing the next song. Now, mind you, we're on stage with probably 30 or 40 people. And in front of us, is an audience of probably 20,000. Mm. And I said to Rory, I said, what key is this in? <laughs> and Rory said, D. And Tommy turned around. He was talking to the crowd, and he turned around and said, boys, I'm trying to do a show here. Lay <laughs> <Try> it down. <laughs> I was shushed by Tommy Macon in front of 20,000 people. Don't feel bad. He did it to me, too. Oh, did it? Yeah. Okay. Of course, the song was in D, right? It, yes, it was. It was. The key was correct. I'm going to do two more songs. Okay. And then... Uh, oh, thank you. I, he's wonderful. He's going to go fix tea and coffee and dessert. It's already happened. I know, he's smell I can smell it from here. Yeah, I, know. I, know. I can smell it too. <laughs> 
But I was, I was about to do your request, so. I love that. Thank you. Tommy Makem and my dad shared a birthday. Yeah, they did. They were a few years apart. <laughs> November 4th was their birthday. And they had a great relationship. He was well into his 60s when I first heard Grandpa's dream. by the sea and some roots in the land. He never got the farm. What he got was a machine in a factory at the edge of town and broken callous hands. It stole away his years and the music from his ears and it left him so he couldn't even hear the factory horn. Still he said someday he knew he'd get his way and end up his days on a saltwater farm. This is your part. Saltwater farm, my saltwater farm. A little bit Mornings we go fishing, work the fields in the afternoon. And as the evening tide rolls in, every song's beneath the moon. Later I would take you in my arms and then listen to the sounds of our salt water farm. said he'd have a cow, some chickens and a hog. A barn filled up with hay and a boat down in the cove. Later in the fall, he'd go hunting with a dog. Winter nights, he'd sit around and read beside the stove. Always kind of poor, and he couldn't dream of more than a place where he would still have to work with his hands. That never was his way, and I can still hear him say, Son of man is at his best between the sea and the land.
little pre-dessert and music there. And we have here. a ton of dessert. There's a ton there. of so dessert. So everybody better be prepared to eat. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you heard the lady. Exactly. <laughs> This, uh, this is a song written by a friend of mine who is probably one of the funniest people I've ever met. Second to Kendall, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you should take a bow later. <laughs> uh, George Wurzbach. He was in a band called Modern Man. I don't know if you've ever had occasion to hear Modern Man's music. Um, but... They were a trio. They no longer officially tour. They do reunions about once a year. Uh, <coughs> but they build themselves as the, street, the three stooges meet the three tenors. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, this song by George is not so much funny as, well, it's, it's got some funny thoughts in it. It's built on the back of a Japanese haiku. And if I could speak Japanese, I'd tell it to you. <laughs> but <clears throat> the entire concept of the song is that life ain't that bad. Even at its worst, it ain't that bad. Sure. <laughs> you know? Got any agenda? Just, just get through this. There's something else that, that you're going to like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's got a great chorus, too, and I hope you sing along. I'll even show you how it goes. Not singing is not an option. I will not take no for an answer. I used to walk through this world cautious and oh so serious. Till the life I was living was merely a near death experience. Well, I changed my story when I finally saw where I was, wasn't where it was at. But I lose my job, I'll sleep till noon. If the news is bad, I'll watch cartoons. And if my house burns down, I'll have lots more room and a much better view of the moon. So that chorus goes, if I lose my job, I'll sleep till noon. If the news is bad, I'll watch cartoons. And if my house burns down, I'll have lots more room and a much better view of the moon. Try it, come on. If I lose my job, I'll sleep till noon. If the news is bad, I'll watch cartoons. And if my house burns down, I'll have lots more room and a much better view of the moon. Don't let it bite you, it won't. In the vastness of space, the ever-expanding universe. We are all puny specks of galactic dust down on Mother Earth. Now I ain't no preacher, don't know if I'll reach ya, but here is some humble advice.
And you surely will live an uncommonly sensible life. Ah, if I lose my job, I'll sleep till noon. If my news is bad, I'll watch cartoons. And if my house burns down, I'll have much more room and a much better view of the moon. In French, but if I lose my job. The CDs, well, there's a pricing formula here. It's, oh, that's difficult. I know, it's difficult, <laughs> but it's worth it. It's all right there. I'll, okay. I'll put it right there. So and when, if folks want to buy something, what, did they just give you the money? They can either do it, that or stick it, well, put it in the yeah, Google pot. Put it in the Google pot. Or, okay. Or if you want to put it on the... don't know how to do this. Visa, MasterCard, or accept it. I'll mail them back in a week. <laughs> <laughs> Come and get some dessert. Dave, you bring back so many memories. I, when I was young, I used to go down to Jersey Spoke City. Yeah, to hear of Jersey Spoke City. It was no. one of the uh, best folk venues for up and coming folks. People would play too. Oh, wow. Tommy is a I used to be there almost every night. So the price of one beer, you could sit and listen to the best music. Right. For all night. Right. And uh, I got to see what Bob did. There is one once I see it. Oh, indeed. Why is it like some space? But anyway, uh, and then when I moved up to Maine many years later, many, many years later, uh, Schooner Fair and Tommy were doing a. Uh, Benefit for this guy that was running for Congress in uh, Bitterfield. Is that? How are you? And so you have a choice. That's kind of retrospective with some of the school affair that I was going to because of Tommy. Yep. You know, and, uh, uh, so I reattached <laughs> in terms of uh, you know, but in the case of the school. Um, yes, and you do worse things with your time. Oh, yes. As I said, when I was living on Peak Side, uh, there are one right there. Oh, the Haitian house. And there's one downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> and if he doesn't know, uh, we're in trouble. I, 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 I lived there from 67 oh, to 89. Yes, you left to your week. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I, I used to work the bread truck with Pete Sound, which was the ticket sales for Casco Bay Lines. Mm -hmm. And also did all the freight and do other one? things like this. Anyway, yes. I used to speak yes. to both. Uh, he takes cards. Uh, yeah. Father, he was out there, but I okay. spent more I time with uh, no Steve and Chuck. 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 Most of those no, I'm going out the front door. Uh, they they used to always do a concert out at the TEIA Hall. Yeah. The last time John Roberts was here, he did Billy Broke Locks. No, but they were just so. Open to singing, you know, to just doing a uh, 